Hello, this will just be a very quick um, yeah, video where I just quickly want to talk about Siphon and um, I really just want to mention it and um, just quickly tell you what it is um, and I'm not going to go into much detail with this because it's uh, yeah a very large um, language in itself even and um, yeah it would um, break the scope of this lecture. Okay, so Cython is basically another language and it's kind of a superset of Python and um, it has some additions but um, yeah, you can basically use normal Python code in Cython, add some things to that and then you can take this code and translate it to very efficient C code um, and then you can use the C code to, for example, um, load this as a module in other Python programs, integrate this with C programs or C++ programs and um, yeah, just make very efficient code um, from just a normal Python file. And um, yeah, it basically works there by um, allowing you to just write normal Python code and uh, if you want you can specify types so you can statically type um, the Python language and this will allow Cython to um, comp yeah, to translate this to very efficient C code because it already knows the types of all the values and then it can use these types to match them to C types and then um, yeah, C types and static typing in C uh, is just very fast and efficient and then you can use a normal C or C++ compiler to compile this Cython um, translated code into a binary and then uh, this will run very quickly. Um, yeah, so in the uh, lecture repository in this week's um, folder there are some examples in this Cython directory and I just quickly want to show how such a file would look like. Here we have a Fibonacci example and um, yeah, this uh, these Cython files are usually called .pyx, uh, so not .py anymore because it's not really Python code um, and yeah, in this case it is, but you could also add things to this which are not strictly Python code, so this is why uh, they're usually called the .pyx files. Um, but yeah, this is just a Fibonacci function which will compute the Fibonacci series up to the value n, which is the parameter here. And this can be used to, uh, so this file can be used to now compile this into binary code with having an intermediate step of C code. And this can be done using such a setup file here and um, yeah, in this setup file we will include, uh, we will import this Cython build uh, submodule and from that more specifically we will uh, use the Cythonize function and Cythonize just takes the um, name of the file that we want to Cythonize and um, this will then create a module which uses this fib.pyx file um, and compiles this code to C code and then uh, we can use the C code to compile it to um, yeah, to binary to run this very efficiently and we can even have a look at the C code that was generated from this pi, uh, this fib.pyx file and you can already see this is a lot of code and um, mostly this is just a lot of um, yeah, overhead that comes from Cython um, but even though this is a lot of code, it will still run very efficiently because yeah, the, the length of a file of uh, code does not always tell you anything about uh, the efficiency and sometimes yeah, long code can run much more efficiently than just a short piece of code. So um, yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about regarding Cython. Um, you can have a look at this uh, tutorial from Read the Docs. There they explain um, the basics of, of Cython and uh, have some basic examples. 
and show you how you can um, yeah how you can work with a Cython if you're interested in that. But this would um, be too much for this lecture right now. And uh, this is just if you're interested and I wanted to mention Cython because it's a great way um, to use Python on, and the easy Python language uh, to write very efficient C or C++ code which are natively supported um, on, on your systems.